Whenever the petrol price goes up, the notion of a zero emissions vehicle that doesn't need petrol at all becomes very attractive indeed. And every time you drive behind one of those trucks that billows huge clouds of diesel smoke, you really think that alternative energy sources are something that should be looked at from a day-to-day -day transport perspective. But of course, it's all very much the stuff of science fiction. And even those hybrid cars by people like Lexus, Toyota and BMW aren't true zero emission vehicles. Well, here's a real glimpse of the future. And don't be fooled by the old generation one series body. This is the BMW Active E, and it is a true plug-in electric vehicle. Under the skin of that E87 one series body is a latest generation all electric drivetrain. BMW built some 1200 Active E prototypes for use around the world, effectively creating a global test fleet that has provided valuable field test results in a variety of conditions. Since this is an electric vehicle, batteries are very much at the core of the BMW Active E, and you'll find them almost everywhere in the car. Certainly where you'd normally find the engine and the fuel tank, they've used as spaces for the batteries, and even the transmission tunnel has got batteries placed in it. They are liquid cool to keep them at an absolutely optimum temperature, and the car comes with a cable which fits into a normal 15 amp household plug, which of course is used for charging. Now the bad news is that it takes between eight and 10 hours to charge these batteries to capacity, and even then, the range is no more than 160 kilometers. In fact, that's what BMW tells us, but this particular car isn't giving us much more than between 90 and 100 kilometers in terms of maximum range. Without those unusual graphics, the Active E would look like any one series coupe. The real differences only become apparent on closer inspection. We'd normally show you the engine that we're talking about, but of course, the Active E is an electric vehicle and the motor is integrated into the rear axle where you can't actually see it. It's rated at 125 kilowatts of maximum power, linked to 249 newton meters of torque, and the power delivery is absolutely instantaneous. As drive to the rear axle is direct, there's no need for a gearbox. Progress is swift and almost silent. One of the questions we get asked about this Active E is whether the fact that it's an electric vehicle compromises its practicality in any way. Now, if you open the boot of this car, and of course it's based on the E87 1 Series, you'll see a huge partition which covers part of the electric motor and therefore steals a significant amount of boot space. Now, there is 200 litres of luggage space according to BMW, but if you look at the shape, you'll need some pretty strange looking luggage to make the most of it. But then I suppose one could argue that the Active E is aimed at city commuting, where luggage space is not really a pressing issue. More important are the interior amenities. The cabin of the Active E is pretty much standard one series BMW fare. It has the same focus on luxury and mod cons, it has the same driver focused ergonomics, and it's really only when you start using the vehicle that you realize that there are some differences. Primarily the display which has a particular menu item for battery charge and battery conditioning, and also the center display which gives you an idea of consumption, not in liters per hundred, but in kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers, and also in terms of driving range. Certainly, comfort and convenience continue to enjoy high priority. From leather for the steering wheel and seats to climate control, super sound and loads of safety kit, the Active E is still a luxury car. But the driving experience is interesting, to say the least. Driving the Active E is both surprisingly normal and radically different. Normal because it has all the normal car things like a steering wheel, a throttle, a brake pedal, and you don't need any special skills to drive the car, but radically different because it is eerily silent. Of course, the electric motor doesn't make any noise at all. All you hear is a distant hum and a bit of road and wind noise. But it's a bit like driving a large and very luxurious golf cart. As golf carts go, this one's much more comfortable and a lot quicker too. The Active E is a lot sprightlier than you'd think, and that despite the fact that it weighs 360 kilograms more than your typical one series petrol model. Of course, it does have 125 kilowatt on tap. That allows a 0 to 100 time of nine seconds dead and a top speed of 145 kilometers an hour limited to that. But for town driving, that should be more than ample.
As with a petrol car, driving with vigor will compromise driving range, but the good news is that the electric motor becomes a generator when decelerating, allowing it to charge the battery and helping the brakes to slow the car down. The Active E is an impressive demonstration of what you expect from a modern day electric vehicle, but it also shows up some serious flaws. One of those is the weight of the car. Because of the batteries, it's a lot heavier than its compact dimensions might in fact suggest. And you really feel that when you're cornering, the car suddenly feels quite ponderous and a lot larger than it actually is. And you also feel it, of course, when you're braking and there's all that momentum, all that impetus, which kind of prevents it from offering the kind of crisp braking that you'd expect. The other side of it, of course, charge time. It takes eight to 10 hours to charge this car. And with 100 Ks odd of range to play with, that's a very long time to wait before you can drive the car again. A 32 amp charge station installed at home would cut recharge times to between four and six hours. Inner city charge stations could also provide a way to top up those batteries. But that still doesn't solve the problem of dirty electricity supplied by coal-fired power stations and the fact that electricity in South Africa is in short supply. The Active-E is more than just an intriguing prototype and the reason is that its drivetrain will be used by the upcoming i3 which will be BMW's first true production electric vehicle. Now, the i3 will be very different in terms of its packaging. It will also be a lot lighter, but the dynamic traits will essentially be the same. So the question is whether the i3 will offer the extended range, the snappier dynamics and the improved practicality that will make that car a true alternative to normal petrol-driven vehicles. Those questions will be answered when the i3 arrives sometime next year. A near silent electric motor bolted to the rear axle provides instant response and plenty of brio, while the liquid cooled batteries provide the spark with zero emissions. For the most, the Active E feels quite normal with comfort to match, but the batteries are heavy, the boot is small, and the range doesn't live up to expectations.